Hello YouTube, this is Morgan Airspeed Prime here with my next Boruto anime episode review. This one's going to be for episode 79, Reunion with Mitsuki. And uh, yeah, I thought this was a pretty solid episode and I think it really made it clear that this is going to be a pretty big arc and given that obviously it doesn't take place in the manga, there was always a sense of like, okay, it's going to be some, somewhat notable, but how could the manga skip over it if it's going to be that big? But this really feels like it, there's there's a whole second half of this arc still to come. And even though this is the reunion with Mitsuki, I think the fact that they didn't do things the way that would, I suppose, lead to a very simple conclusion makes me think that this is definitely going in the direction that it's going to be a much longer thing. Because, of course, what we saw here was that the reunion really didn't go as planned. Mitsuki just reasserted the fact that this is my will, I'm going with them. You know, basically, uh, Sekie is my friend, and he snake lightnings Borto. He actually attacks Borto in all of this, and so I think they did the thing I think we almost didn't expect them to do, which was have Borto experience something where it is really forcing him to question his sort of like uh, belief of uh, Mitsuki not betraying the village and now directly to him he's seen Mitsuki, Mitsuki has attacked him. How does Borto come back from this? How does Borto maintain his um, trust in Mitsuki and desire to want to go after him and get him back when he's directly seen Mitsuki go off with them? No problem. Mitsuki had the perfect opportunity to basically turn sides if he was kind of in some sort of a bad position. He chose to not do that, and here we are. Um, so I, I think that's the biggest, I suppose, takeaway from the episode is just the impact on Borto of suddenly this thing that's been driving him the whole time. He's been the one most set in stone that I don't believe that Mitsuki actually betrayed the village we can get him back. I know if I meet him, I can make it clear that I want to be a better friend to him. How does he continue with that now? So that's going to be really interesting to see as the episodes progress, but it's also going to be interesting to see just what exactly Mitsuki's up to, because again, going back to the start of this arc, which at this point is a while ago, um, it's all about Mitsuki trying to find out what his will was. Uh, he even asked um, Onoki what that was, which that stuff is going to link it back in, I suppose, coming into play like next episode. But he's still trying to figure out what what he's about, basically. And that that's what makes, I suppose, the fact that he chose to attack Porto. Like, if it was just him trying to figure something out within himself, he could have just sided with them without attacking Porto. But there, I suppose there also is the potential here that he is... He did that just to get across that, look, I attacked someone you think is really close to me. This proves that I'm on your side when maybe he is planning something. Now, this is, the significance here is obviously we get the full reveal that uh, Kokuyo and uh, Sekie are artificial humans. They are basically more complete versions of the um, Akata things, I think. I I think that's what they are. The, the, but either way, the kind of uh, earth kind of monster things that are also around them, they are basically better versions of them, whereas the Akata things are more uh, kind of beast-like versions of them. And they that's why they want Mitsuki, of course, is to figure out, I suppose, how to turn their version of what an artificial human is into a long-lasting one like a Mitsuki by analyzing him in some way. And, of course... Uh, one of the key rooted problems which is causing Mitsuki to do this is that he's kind of questioning am I on the good side because like I was made to be on the good side and in a way I don't actually have a choice myself I was created purposefully with the goal of you know siding with Borto so I suppose this is Mitsuki testing the limits of I suppose how free his choices are and maybe he's trying to test to see of like okay I'm on the good side and I'm leaning that way can I even at all go to the bad side? And he's proven to himself that he can leave the village, he can attack his best friend. Is that just kind of what he's trying to prove to himself or is there something more? That's what's going to be really important. Because again, we are trying to get to that point where Borto convinces Mitsuki that they are best friends because that's the whole point of having Garaga around. 
and it was interesting Borto actually does get to summon Garaga, which I, was cool, in the middle of a battle after doing a bunch of other jutsu, which was pretty impressive, and even Sarada seemed a little shocked by it, so that was pretty cool. Um, but yeah, he summons him, of course he doesn't have any control over him, but Garaga eventually, to get to what he wants to see, ends up sort of helping out, but making it really clear that he isn't he isn't going ahead with what Borto is saying. So he's basically just an observer who'll kind of help them along the way, but for the most part, not really. Um, and he is obviously trying to see if Borto can be the one to convince him to, I suppose, trust people again. And now Borto suddenly has to go through that exact thing. And it makes Borto and Garga actually at this point very similar as characters in terms of having experienced the big betrayal. And it's going to be very telling what direction Borto takes. Does he go down the Garga path or does he stay strong and just continue to go after Mitsuki uh, regardless of what? Because it's it, this is very quickly turning into a, a similar but kind of different version of Naruto chasing Sasuke and how far will he go to make this happen? And now suddenly Borto is going through that, so that's interesting. As far as the fights go, it was a pretty action-focused episode for the most part. Um, Kokio, uh, more or less, is just, he's very powerful. He has kind of strength that kind of goes even beyond just what his build looks like. And he doesn't really have any jutsu. He's like a weapons taijutsu expert. And it just seems like uh, enhanced strength is, is basically the main power that he has. Um, which is cool, because he was just able to completely like stonewall everyone he was up against they didn't really for the most part get one over on him they came close just with some of the trickery but uh, really didn't even get anywhere near him just he was more powerful and he forced obviously the rest of Ina Sh Shika Cho to come back in and then they had to actually retreat from the battle which was interesting uh, Sekie is revealed to have uh, Deidara's basically uh, explosive clay um, detonating clay jutsu uh, and he's while he doesn't seem to be able to do it as quickly, it's a more kind of basic version of it, whereas Daedra was obviously advanced, the master of it. He's still very good at it, and it's a very powerful jutsu, so... Um, he's a good... Um, he, he was impressive in the fight, though I, I think in that case they were more trying to just get everyone together. Um, but we see that what happens here is that they're, they're very much emphasizing Mitsuki and Sekie is like this different friendship compared to Mitsuki and Borto. And they're trying, I think, to get across that maybe Sekie respects Mitsuki a bit more, whereas the whole thing with Borto is that maybe he hasn't listened to Mitsuki as much, has he been as good of a friend to him as the other way around, and maybe Sekie is doing that better. And, and just the fact that Mitsuki actually looks out for Sekie, when Sekie goes down with... It seems to like run out of energy, it seems to be the the nature of what type of being he is, if he uses too much energy, it just kind of backfires on him because he's not complete, he's not stable like Mitsuki, so... I, I think there is a sense of just Mitsuki trying to help out kind of other beings like him, but the whole... what he's doing to Borto is obviously like what we don't fully get in this situation. Um, so, I, I think that the, there's obviously a lot to come. I, I, we'll, we'll come back to fights with Kogio, uh, Saikie, I assume. We're going to get introduced the uh, the main villain, I suppose, once again here. We're going to go back into the the village hidden in the stone and, and get into that plot, which was introduced in the previous episode. Um, and I think that will begin to explain things a bit more um, uh, in terms of just what exactly is going on here. How were these kind of artificial beings created? And what's the significance of everything that's actually happening here? Uh, Next episode, I think, might give us the sense of how big a scope the arc is, or, or how small it is. Because it feels like there's still a long way to go. Just based off, like, the opening and the fact that, like, the the, the new Sand Trio are in it. Um, uh, who obviously we saw at the, the tuning exam. Uh, there's a lot of crazy giant snake battle type things happening. So we still have to get to all of that from the opening. And, and it doesn't seem like we're quite anywhere near that yet, so... I think this is turning into a similar one to the the land of kind of land of waves, wasn't it? Or either way, the 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 water nation that they went to in one of the earlier arcs that ended up being actually quite big. And um, so I, I think it it's going to be like a, a that version of it, but with the 
you know the the stone village here. So, um, and if and if they and if they go about it that way in in Borto, where like they they cover canon content, then they have like a big arc that maybe expands the rest of the world. Like they go to the lightning village and like the next one or something like that. That's actually a pretty cool thing if if that's maybe the direction they're going in it. But it it is sort of noted that they've gone to like the the water nation. We've obviously had lots of stuff in fire because that's where we are. Um, we're dealing with uh, Earth here, the village hidden in the stone, and you know there's still kind of other ones to go. Um, so we'll we'll see if they go fully uh, ahead into that or not. But um, yeah, I think that's basically everything I wanted to say about this episode. Um, definitely the, for me, the highlight, you know, the, the big shocking moment of the episode was Mitsuki going as far as he did here to attack Borto and just the ramifications going forward of that, of Borto has been so driven, like, oh, it'll work out once I get to see Mitsuki, and now it hasn't worked out, what will they do? But that's been the video, that's been the review, thanks for watching, and bye.